And in this case, it was the real city that seemed to be matching point for point my memory of the model, which I had stared at for a long time from a ramp in the museum. I walk around the city not knowing if I'm a giant in a miniature landscape or a midget in monumental surroundings. The city is modular, office plans look like city maps, and the facades of buildings resemble street plans. The city is a druggy rush of machine, rectilinear, vertical, tantalizing. You zoom in and in, and remain recognizably in the city. A moment later, the man by the trees has moved on. He has not noticed his echo behind him, and the man who echoes him has not noticed him, or even if he has, has certainly not noticed himself noticing him. There are thousands of such echoes and agreements every minute. Far from the city, on the Mexico side, an iron fence spirals into the distance, enforcing on the land a separation in the mind. In the grass near the inspection post, someone has planted two white crosses. On the smaller one, you can see the word Mujeres. Shadow means photograph. Sojourner Truth wrote on the 1864 photographic postcard bearing her image, I sell the shadow to support the substance. Here is a shadow above, and enmeshed below it, the substance. Sometimes the shadow is more real than the body. In Bali, which is beautiful, we are advised not to say. In 1965, following a failed coup, the Indonesian army stoked communal hatreds, leading to a massive anti-communist purge. The victims and the executioners were ordinary Indonesians. We are advised not to say. 
The American government provided lists of communists to Indonesian death squads. We are advised not to say the number of dead comes to more than 500,000. The perpetrators move about freely. The survivors are uncompensated. William Moore died in Etowa County in 1963, shot to his death on a highway near Gadsden by God knows who. William Moore was 36 years old and white, a postman from Baltimore. He was walking through Alabama alone to deliver a letter against segregation. The sandwich board on him said, equal rights for all. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed. There's clan in those woods still. fashion in Guantanamo has suited Isis well for inspiration. The jumpsuit, oversized, is rolled up at the ankles. The hood, like an eyelid, draws attention not only to what is hidden, but to what would look right back at us, if it could. sign saying cars bearing an image of a car above a car there are signs that say nothing as revealing as the poker faced skull under all our facial expressions but almost as interesting as these signs of nothing are those signs that announce only that they are signs signs that live as an homage to sign as sign a week later, I walked in the area under the expressway. The sign here sign was gone, replaced by an ordinary sign selling something. The cityscape is full of hidden signs, and at times, what was hidden becomes visible. If you walk further down Nieder Kirchnersasse, you will find a strange complex of buildings and unearthed subterranean ruins. These buildings were the headquarters of the Gestapo and the SS. And nearby are other buildings that were used during the campaign of terror that sent millions of people to their early deaths. There's a cellar here, preserved, where political prisoners were tortured and killed. Evil ground because of what happened here. Holy ground because of the innocence it consumed. All cities are places where traces remain of the things that happened in them. Berlin is a compressed instance of the phenomenon, a synecdoche of organized and disorganized violence, 
a sign that reads sign here on the 21st floor of the Hanmi pharmaceutical company in Seoul beautiful young employees come and go in their soft dark suits they drink coffee and show each other interesting things on their samsungs their laughter is mellow and rich suddenly i'm alone in the staff lounge below the enormous city awakening to its day 35 miles north the rupture in the terrain the horror state some of my dreams i fly in some of my dreams i fall both sometimes appear together in the same dream and my body leads me there by some respiratory change faster breathing or slower In Don Quixote, there's a young girl who often dreamed of falling down from a tower and never coming to the ground. She would wake from the dream to find herself as weak and shaken as if she had really fallen. On a recent flight, I fell asleep and dreamed of falling. and i heard the captain's voice and woke up inside a world of cloud and was as shaken as if i had really fallen Years of winters froze into each other. Some of our students died. Suicide. Heart attack. Two in a hit and run. All girls. others had breakdowns then spring came and the glaciers retreated leaving us riven with valleys
I swear he just suddenly appeared. The angel is the one who communicates between realms. Is this Indra, who was as precocious as Hermes? Or is it Ganesh, messenger of the gods, opener of, wo of roads? Out in the sun that day in Goa, some kind of Catholic procession was going on noisy around the old cathedral. But inside the cafe of the Datta Prasad Hotel, a hermetic air reigned. I raised my camera slowly. His glance took hold of me. Your progress is not a line, direct or winding, from one point to another, but a flickering series of scenes. A street is not only its tarred surface, the buildings alongside it, the cars fast or slow, the people around you. It is also the way those things relate to one another, the way they combine and recombine. You are moving, the cars are moving, other people are moving, even the sun is moving slowly. And in the middle of this multi-dimensional movement, you must decide when to press the shutter. A second before, it has not yet arrived. A second later, it is irretrievably gone. The Greek fleet was ready for war, but there were no winds, and they could not set sail. There would be no winds, and no sailing, and no war, and no destruction of Troy, until the goddess Artemis had her satisfaction. Agamemnon agreed to give away his daughter Iphigenia to Artemis as a sacrifice. In the scene, the great painter Timanthes painted of Iphigenia's departure. Calchas was sorrowful. Odysseus was more sorrowful. And Menelaus was overcome with sorrow. But the father Agamemnon's grief was greatest of all, a shattering extreme of grief. And Timanthus could not or would not go beyond the limit of what he had already shown. And so, he depicted Agamemnon without depicting him, turned away with a veil over his head. I last walked there on September 9, 2001. Thirteen years pass. 
I finally return. One turns away to show what cannot otherwise be shown. The sense in turning away. The power of a gesture that speaks without being spoken to. What is he saying? To whom is he talking? He speaks into the line in this most exposed of spaces. He is secret in public. The hood is extra secrecy, like the veil Timanthes puts over Agamemnon. The phone box frames him in a way that makes me think of a prisoner whose singular lifeline is the telephone that reaches the outside world. Why do I feel I have seen him before? Chris Marker says, remembering is not the opposite of forgetting, but rather it's lining. Imagine for a moment that every face you cannot see is your own face, but years later. The future is lined with your future face. I was about a mile away giving a reading at the National Museum in Nairobi. Word of the attack filtered in. Oblivious, I continued taking questions from the audience. I was at the museum and he was at the mall because my reading was scheduled earlier and his later. It could have been the other way around. Our conversation could have ended with my death, not his. A question of scheduling. Many people died there that day. 
one mile away, in a net, in a gush of gore. The death toll is always one, plus one, plus one, plus one. The death toll is always one. They must have known they were being watched. The African guys doing a brisk trade in Prada and Gucci bags. Late afternoon, the light darkening over the city. The bag sat there, and there was a sudden commotion. With a great whoosh, my brothers raced up the steps, their bags gathered up in white cloths, caught at the corners, and converted into bulging sacks. One after the other, they sped upwards. Tourists shrank out of the way. Far below, the carabinieri arrived. But by then, my brothers were gone. Those last angels vanishing up the long flight of steps like a hurry through which known and strange things pass. And on the banks of the Congo one afternoon, a boy plays on a railing. He wears a white shirt and black gloves. Ahead of him is the cross on which he is supported, reinterpreted as red elements of iron and painted concrete. On the boy's body is the infant Christ's towel, the condemned Christ's loincloth, the sudarium of St. Veronica, the linen shroud of burial. Behind the boy, the river rushes. Is he a type of Christ? Or is he St. Christopher? Or is he an angel? That black glove is as intense and uncanny as a pair of wings. The boy moves between metaphors. Suddenly, he lowers his head. His eyes disappear. In the spring of 2011, shortly before I turned 36, after a brief episode of blindness, I received a diagnosis of papilophlebitis, big blind spot syndrome, and underwent surgery to repair a number of perforations in the retina of my left eye.
the photography changed after that. The looking changed and the one who looked Color is the sound an object makes in response to light. Objects don't speak unless spoken to. An object does not have a color. It makes a color. The way a bell makes a sound. Sound is molecular motion and color too is molecular motion. It is the selective emission and absorption of light on the surface of an object. As an untouched drum makes no sound, an object in total darkness makes no color. With my eyes, I begin to hear what I see. Something in the middle of a group of five. Something not in the middle, something on the periphery. Something first or last. Something squeezed. Something brown. Something painted. Something made of metal, but susceptible to damage. Something made elsewhere. Something made for a different purpose. Something put on the street. Something found on the street. Something seen on the street. Something held up by the others in its group. Something under pressure. Something exerting pressure. Something seen on the way to a rally in the time of Black Lives Matter. 600 people led by John Lewis march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in 1965. They are met by Alabama state troopers and local police in masks and on horseback. The troopers charge into the crowd and with a viciousness that can hardly be believed, batter the undefended people. James Baldwin writes, I could not suppress the thought that this earth had acquired its color from the blood that had dripped down from these trees. We recover earrings, headphones, 
money, family photographs, bracelets, handwritten letters, mobile phones, SIM cards, passports, and watches from the bodies of the people drowned in the Mediterranean. Tram number 15 to Buchechplatz in Zurich. A woman sat in the seat in front of mine. She was in her late 20s or early 30s. Late afternoon light. Her hair was pulled up and I could see the tattoo on her neck clearly. It was in two lines. A woman's name, a date. I wrote both down. Later, when I looked up the name, I found an old newspaper article. A woman of that name had died in a small town near Phoenix, Arizona in 2007, and it had happened on the date in the tattoo. In the car that night, the article said, had been two other people both of whom survived the crash and both of whom at that time, like the woman who died, were in their early 20s. A man, the article said, and another woman. Birmingham, I listen repeatedly to John Coltrane's Alabama. The introduction of the song has a discursive quality to it, like a black preacher's exhortations. And that is what it is. The keening saxophone line, built over piano chords, roll like a congregation's murmuring. It is a paraphrase of the eulogy Dr. King gave after a bomb exploded. 
at the 16th Street Baptist Church in 1963. These children, unoffending, innocent, and beautiful, McCoy Tyner's piano weeps. We're the victims of one of the most vicious and tragic crimes ever perpetrated against humanity. Jimmy Garrison on bass. Alvin Jones on drums. These children Cornea is Latin cornu, horn, a horn for goring the visible. What you see, you spare up with your eye. The word is related to cor corner in the sense that a horn is an extremity. Retina, on the other hand, is Latin reta net, loose. Reticulated is from the same word. What you optically interpret, you gather up. Trident up front, the net behind. Hard gradient of cornea, retinal meadow. The horn stayed firm. The net came loose. Persons unknown, for reasons unknown, placed a strip of black tape on the portrait of each black professor at Harvard Law School. The strip generally went from upper left to lower right, like a backslash, crossing out the right eye of each black professor, making of each a pirate or a cyclops. We learn quite young the tricks of perspective. With, with your thumb, you can make the moon disappear. With a tarp, you can blind a mountain. With a net, you can capture a horn. But not really.
darkness is not empty. After I presented Blind Spot here earlier this week, I rescanned the negative of the boy by the Congo. His eyes disappear, I had said. But all of a sudden, with slightly altered settings, I could now see his face, his eyes. Darkness is not empty. It is information at rest. Late in the 19th century, after hundreds of years of pressure by European colonists, the villages on the interior of the Congo River began to succumb to the invaders. In response to this civilizational crisis, Manga Aka power figures were sculpted ever larger, growing from their miniature sizes to the height of a man. In each village, there was just one Mangaaka figure, a sentry to ward off the oncoming collapse. poised to spring into action, as scholars wrote, and intensely reflective. The Manga Aka was full of potent medicine, with eyes of white enamel, irises of iron ore. This boy is double visioned. He is looking out, looking outward. But here, poised at the edge of the crisis, he is also looking inward, looking in.